Hey, this is Tom from Inspiration Metalworks, and in this week's video, we're going to go over three tips that helped me make the change from two-dimensional you know, pen and paper or even AutoCAD uh, style drawings to three-dimensional drawings using Fusion 360. Okay, I'll admit it. I am an old pencil and paper kind of uh, draftsman. Um, when I was in engineering school, when I was learning how to do drafting, I literally, I, I learned it on you know, pencil and paper. Uh, you know, blueprints for me were actually on blue paper, right? Um, and when the new three-dimensional uh, solid modeling software came out, I really struggled with it. I tried using Inventor in the past. I tried using SolidWorks. I had more success in time, but it wasn't until I truly um, I made a mental leap with uh, with using Fusion 360. And some of that is in no small part due to uh, seeing the videos that the Autodesk team uh, has put out, the Fusion team is awesome about doing that kind of thing, and different webinars, uh, but also um, videos that guys like John Saunders put out and um, things like that. So that really helped me quite a bit. What I decided to do today, though, is to, to try and, and pass that on a little bit uh, with just three simple things that were the, the three mental uh, barriers that I had to get past in order to effectively use you know a solid modeling uh, software um, even you know sketch up things like that right so regardless of what you know which tools you decide to use let, let's just think about these a little bit uh, I'm gonna focus on fusion today because that's what I use every day but um, we'll, we'll start with that and then uh, we'll we'll get more advanced as time goes on and remember there are some great tutorials built into fusion as well so with that, I'm going to stop babbling. Let's get into Fusion and get started. Okay, so we are in Fusion 360 now. And uh, let's start with the first mental block that I had in making the switch to 3D modeling. And the first is that you have to start in 3D uh, uh, models. Um, the, uh, the very first tool that I used was actually... Um, it was SketchUp, although as a student and I had Auto, um, AutoCAD through there, uh, I did get a copy of Inventor, and you know basically I was looking at this going, oh well, okay, so you start with a model, your 3D model, and you, you go from there, and this confused the heck out of me. It absolutely confused me. So let's take for example a fireplace poker. So you know we need to, we need to model the pokey bit, right? The part that's going to get cut on the the CNC lathe. So the first thing that I would have done is, you know, I collect cylinder and, you know, we'll start at the origin and you know, we'll, we'll drag it up to what, what we're doing. And I say, okay, so there's my, my cylinder that I'm, I'm going to use for the, the uh, poker, but then how do I, how do I make the angles in here? What do I do here? How, what, what's next? Um, there are ways to do this uh, and, and start from this method. But what I found is this was just a big mental block for me, and it was not the right way to go. So let's forget this. Let's go back to what we know. Let's start with the way we would do it in on paper, right? So a sketch, right? Starting with a sketch allows us to do a, a lot, a lot more. Uh, so here we are. Now we're thinking in in you know, what I was used to of two dimensional mode. Uh, you notice if we look at the sketches, there's lots of things we can do. I'm just going to start with a line, right? And I'm going to start in this case from the pokey bit end, and I'm going to go right down the middle of the axis. Now, this is how I would have started out uh, drawing, and typically I would have made this uh, a reference line. There we go. Um, you know, so I might start with my reference line, which is my axis. But in three-dimensional modeling, it's great to have that axis and know that, but we really need to think about things as cutouts, right? So I uh, think of it as a cutaway or a slice of the thing that we're going to make. So in this case, rather than do the whole thing and then you know, mirror it so that it shows the whole object that I'm doing, I'm only going to do one half, right? So maybe I'll come over to here and I'll come up a little bit. And here's your second tip already. You know, we're going to uh, when doing lines, if you click and hold the mouse button down, you notice it lets me do arcs, 
right? And so the number to the right is the radius of it. In this case, we're going to come up here. Let's let's start it to about here. So yeah, that's not bad. I'm going to do the same thing from here because we're going to an increasing radius r to give me my point. And now we've got a closed off sketch. Now I'm going to press the escape key uh, to get out of line mode. You might have seen that green, that green arrow that showed up um, earlier, but I'll just press the escape key. So now I've got my, my sketch of what I want. I could mirror this and you know take a look at it, but I don't need to, right? I can just stop the sketch, and you notice it puts us back in isometric mode. And from here, I can go into that 3D environment now and revolve it, right? Because I've got this great uh, design here that has an axis and a profile. So we'll do a profile, we'll select that. The axes we want, well, we actually have several. I mean, an axis can be any straight line, right? So I could I could click on this one over here and it turns it into this weird looking uh, cylinder, which I gotta admit, it's kinda kinda neat looking. Right? But that's that's not what we want, right? So um, let's cl let's clear that axis out. Uh, I could click on this axis and if we uh, turn now. This is kind of how I would make a, a plate, a cover plate for, say, uh, motorcycle parts. But that's not what we want either. We want a pokey bit. So there's our pokey bit. Right? We selected the axis that we drew. You know that uh, reference line that we had in there. Uh, what is kind of neat though is you can do cutaways. You can do like portions. And this is what I mean about thinking about things in terms of cutaways, right? When we're drawing in two dimensions, you know, we often do an isometric view to give people an idea of what things might look like. Well. This is your isometric view coming to life, right? We're not going to mess with that. We'll just do full and say, okay. So there is our pokey bit all modeled up. Really simple to do. So from this one simple uh, exercise, we did two things. We learned that we don't have to start with a solid model, that we can start with a sketch. And we learned if you click and hold while you're drawing the line, it turns into the arc command. Um, Second thing to look at, you saw me moving things around using the uh, view cube, right? Um, remember this little home button, that is your friend, right? If you zoom way in and you're working on things or you start rotating things around and getting all lost on where you are, things like that, which, you know, it happens, right? Click that button and it puts you right back to your standard view. You can choose to look at things from the top. You can rotate around, right? Let's you go through and look at uh, solid, um, you know, 90 degrees. You can look at oblique, you know, 45 degree angles. But that home button will always take you back to your standard view. So there is, uh, we'll call that one tip 2A, right? Uh, the third piece in here, and we'll, we'll do a new drawing for this one. Uh, as you, know, you may know, I do quite a bit of work uh, on the plasma table. Right? So we'll do much the same thing we're doing. We'll go back to the line and let's just let's just draw something. Maybe this is a bracket that I'm drawing because uh, I've been doing a, a bunch of these brackets lately, right? So here's our our bracket. Uh, we can come back and now we can do that extrude command. So just like revolve made a solid out of a sketch. Extrude will let you take your profile that you made and literally extrude it into what you want. Um, this is actually 11 gauge, so we'll say it's 120. So there's our part. But how do I cut it? Well, my machine does not allow uh, G code input, at least not with the software level that I have. So what I do is I can right click on that sketch because remember this is two dimensional. I did, technically I didn't even have to do that extrude. I could have stopped at the sketch. But you can do sketch and click save as DXF. And that uh, right there will let you save that drawing out to something that you can cut with your plasma cutter. So Gary, I hope that helps you uh, helps you out a little bit. Uh, so that's my, my three tips for today. So we went over the fact that you don't have to start with a solid model. We went over uh, drawing with the line and getting uh, compound curves, you know, right from the uh, from the line command without having to switch 
uh, the tool you're using. I, we actually went through a couple of different uh, solid modeling techniques of so going into the revolve and the uh, extrude commands. And then lastly, uh, we exported into a DXF file for use in other systems. So just a, a few tips, but this was one of the things that had prevented me from making the leap uh, from my two-dimensional drawing into three-dimensional drawings. So I hope this helps. All right, well, I hope this helps you a little bit. Um, again, Fusion 360 has some great tutorials already out there. They're built into the software. You can just work your way through. Uh, they give you samples in there. Uh, of, of the code, they'll, they'll walk you through it, there's videos, there's tons of videos on YouTube, check out the Autodesk uh, Fusion 360 uh, channel, uh, guys like John Saunders are, are putting out multiple videos a week on, on Fusion, there's a, just a ton of resources out there. Don't be afraid of this stuff, uh, it really does help. Even if you're not doing CNC work, being able to calculate the, um, the work, in fact, I did a, a design in here just recently that that let me model the weight of the design and, and I needed to be able to to keep within you know two percent uh, margin of error on my weight and you know I'm within one percent uh, so I was really really happy with that and that was a fabrication job it wasn't you know, it wasn't a job that I was doing a bunch of CNC work on so uh, it's a great tool and you know for most users it's free right so the, the argument that these tools are, are really expensive and, and cost prohibitive it just really isn't valid anymore. So check it out if you get a chance. Um, I'm going to wrap it up. We're, getting, we're probably going to be over 10 minutes on this video. I try to keep them 10 minutes or less, but uh, we might be a little over on this one. Uh, thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Um, many, many thanks to uh, all of you that support me on uh, Patreon. Uh, I do have a Patreon uh, page. I'll put a link up on one of those sides there. Uh, it's probably on that side, but uh, I'll put a link up and we'll we'll get that going. Uh, but uh, thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And if you do have any questions, feel free uh, reach out. I always have my email at the end of these videos. So I'll see you again real soon.